Greetings and welcome. My name is Jake Grayson. I'm a wildlife and food forest garden designer and I'm on site today. I'm out gardening for a client over in Poppet Sands, uh, which is near Cardigan on the River Tavy. And I had a meeting early this morning with West Wales Climate Coalition, uh, which is a kind of pressure group of pressure groups of people who want to do something about the nature and climate emergency. Uh, it, we were talking about education and it was fascinating. There's one particular point this that this this chap made which was about a book called tree lines i think it is i'll put a i'll put a link into the show notes and the there's one idea that he was talking about was with a an area where there is forest next to an ocean if you clear fell that forest the ocean degrades as well and the ecosystems are connected and what actually happens apparently the mechanism is that the uh, there is a, a particular acid which is in the complex organic uh, compound which is in the leaves and that falls onto the forest floor and it combines with iron and then that gets washed out to the sea and that iron forms the foundation of the food web for I think it's phytoplankton uh, and it's an integral part of the uh, of phytoplankton's diet and if you clear fell a forest that doesn't happen so you notice there's a degradation of both environments and they are connected so just going to show you <laughs> going to show you the Tavy Valley now so that's the river Tavy uh, it goes out to the sea just a bit further up further further down river up there and this is all very much connected this this garden that I'm working on is very connected with its landscape and I think a key point really for me as a forest gardener I am very aware that an awful lot of the crops that we're planting are not native um, we've got here there's red currant there's gooseberry possibly native and um, don't think it is um, there's black currant red currant black currant I think black currant might be native red currant almost definitely is but I think mostly up in Scotland and a jostaberry which is a which has been bred. So these are all kind of current bushes that are in here. And they're kind of not native, they've all been bred in one shape or form. And we've got two cherry trees on a dwarfing rootstock, and then two plum trees on a on a kind of medium-sized rootstock. And they're kind of not really native. And then we have other aspects of the garden. You've got gorse there, bramble, which is native. Daffodils, kind of native. There are native, yeah, there is like a native species of daffodil. Hawthorn, native. Sycamore, not native. Well, it's, it's a neophyte. I think it's only been here for a few hundred years. Uh, silver birch, native. And then there's a uh, Australian, uh, what should we call it? Eucalyptus tree definitely not native oak tree definitely native so you get the idea it's like a picture that there's it's a mixture really and I think this is what's important if you're going to plant something put a plant in that's going to give you an edible crop because it's just a good way of connecting you with your garden but then everywhere else put in uh, native plants so I will show you I'll cut to another scene and show you that and just one more example this is a stag's horn sumac, beautiful branches. I've actually cut this down to make room for the fruit trees, and it's suckering as you can see. It's coming up a great deal. But this is like a, this is a non-native, has edible berries that you can make a lemonade out of, and I'm sure other things as well. Um, but it's yeah, it's a non-native. So should you plant it in the garden, do think about putting native plants in where possible. And before I pop next door. I just think it's important to understand the reason why we want to put native plants in. That really is about providing food for insects, for the larvae and uh, adult forms of insects, because insects form an integral part of the food web. If you put food in and habitat for insects in your garden, then you'll get all the other wildlife for free, so to speak. So it's vitally, vitally important. If you're thinking about putting something in, do you really need it to be non-native? Is there a native alternative? And, uh, and this is particularly in the case with ornamental gardens, is use native plants where, where you possibly can. I'll just show you what I'm doing next door in the woodland garden. And en route, <laughs> here's Ronnie Barker, who's helping me out in the garden today, aren't you, Ron?
to the woodland garden, going the back way, I have discovered a whole load of uh, honeysuckle. And this is just a kind of case in point. This is a, a native climber, grows pretty big, I think about six metres or something. There are cultivars of it, uh, which I've actually planted one at the front of the house. And uh, Belgica, Lanicera periclaminum, I think is the botanical name for it. And this is growing, oh, this is growing everywhere. So here we have the two beds. These are at the west side of the house, but it's quite shaded as you can see from here. And in these beds, I'm putting some couple of blueberries, small blueberries in here. Probably one there, one here and possibly one here and then up here I want to put the rhubarb I might, I've got to have a look at the soil and see what the conditions are like so blueberries not a native or there is a kind of near native bilberry but it's not yeah it's fairly fairly native uh, but it does have berries on and if humans aren't eating the berries then this wildlife certainly will and then we've got rhubarb that I'm transplanting and the rhubarb isn't, uh, this is a room ex hybridum, I think is the, is the stuff that we eat in the shops. So, um, yeah, again, not really native, it's not native. But then what I am doing is to put in a whole load of native woodland plants in here. So I will be putting in sweet woodruff, keeping the ferns in here. There's heart's tongue fern and a range of other ferns as well. Taking out bits of rhododendron. I'll take the ivy back, leave the ivy on that side. Um, there's some daffs at the back. And then I'll be putting in some um, hedge, uh, oh, woodland, wood geranium, um, wood, wood cranes bill, geranium sylvaticum. Uh, I think, I'm not 100% <laughs> not sure which, exactly which geranium I'm going to be putting in, but there will be that sweet wood rough. And then, yeah, plant across and through the rhubarb and around. At the back, I want to put some uh, eupatorium cannabis. A Eupatorum cannabinum, which is, um, <laughs> I always forget the common name for it, <laughs> big plant, hemp agrimony, uh, and that'll go along the back, provide a bit of a screen at the back there. So, yeah, I'm using edibles, but I'm also using natives, and I'm not just taking everything out totally, I'm kind of replanting bits and pieces, there's some greater periwinkle, which I'm planting elsewhere, there's some geranium macrorhizum, which I'm planting elsewhere, reusing stuff, reusing the plants, and uh, this is a camellia up here, I've just taken off a couple of the lower branches to let more light in, and, but obviously it's, 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 it is, <laughs> it's an established tree it's part of the garden don't just cut everything down do you work with what you have but do put in uh, native plants and really useful resource for a lot of this is database of insects and their food plants and I'll, I'll show you a link for that as well so that's what i better do i've got to get on with do these plant these out and then i've got some uh, native oregano that i'm planting out the front of the house as well as a kind of ground cover but a fantastic bee plant really really worth it um, oh, I'll show you that very quickly as well. So here we go at the front of the house, and this is by the by the side. As you can see, the house is up on the on the big platform up here, and this bed here, very steeply sloping, mostly south facing. Doesn't get the afternoon sun so much as you can see. The sun's just going around the corner, and there's enough sun, I think, for a couple of um, sage here. So I've got to get some some sage put a couple of sage in so they can then be harvested right next to to here so you can you can you can pick them easily for the kitchen and it's a sunny spot as well and then i'm putting um oregano there's blue alkanet which is a neophyte neophyte means recent introduction in the past 500 years or so um and yeah there's a heart's tongue fern which i'll move and a fern which i might might keep might move trim the box back, boxes are native. I put mallow down there, sea thrifters at the bottom, uh, they're native. I think there might even be a bit of thyme down the bottom as well, which is a bit damp for it. But um, yeah, so I've got all these oregano here, oregano vulgari, um, and these don't look an awful lot at the moment, but this will provide a, a, a blanket and they'll help bind uh, the soil as well so you don't get run off here too so they're kind of good ground cover plant and you can and you can eat them use them as cook for cooking uh, and they're native a brilliant brilliant bee plant as well so that'll be a mass of that in the center uh, there so that'll be good okay so I uh, hope you found that interesting and useful and I'll see you again soon cheers bye